guys, we're back with another video. Uh, I'm just kind of running through the most common uh, emails that I get, the questions that I get from social media about how to help athletes. And this last, these last few videos have all been about flexibility. We talked about screening hip and shoulder flexibility, addressing quad stiffness and, and hip flexor stiffness. We talked about shoulder flexibility. Probably the next common one that I get is like issues with calves. So issues with heel pain or issues with uh, knee pain from not being able to land correctly or just so much stiffness in the calves that athletes can't sprint well and they can't land properly. So uh, I think following the same format is probably the best approach to do again a couple things from the research that are beneficial and especially with calves they become extremely stiff and overworked because of how much gymnasts point their toes because of how many times they sprint and run and jump male female trampoline artistic it doesn't matter everybody has this aggressive toe point that sometimes leads to a lock a loss of ankle flexibility the other way so Hannah's going to walk us through a, just a little bit of a circuit that we use to get people for calf stiffness or if they're in rehab with me maybe coming off a bout of severs disease or osgood we give them a lot of these circuits to try to address some of the stiffness so first things first is we would have screened hannah and made sure that she was limited in ankle flexibility which we did in another video but then once she's kind of confirmed as not being uh, mobile enough one foot will go over the roller and she's going to roll just from her achilles all the way up to the back of her knee and she's gonna rotate her toes in and out a little bit just to get the inside of her calf and the outside of her calf so 30 seconds to 60 seconds on each leg okay done every day is probably the most effective dose so she would do that for about a minute on each side okay after that she would come to the edge of the block here and she's going to just show us a good old-fashioned calf stretch okay so a couple things to think about one is the knee will be bent Two is that the toes will be up on the block. And three is that she's not letting her knee collapse in. You can't see that, but she's not flattening her foot out. So she just rocks forward until she feels a stretch in the bottom of her foot, her calf, or her Achilles. Obviously no pain right in the front of the ankle joint, but she does this for 30 to 60 seconds. Again, big systematic review showed that 30 to 60 seconds done five to six days per week was probably the optimal dose of static stretching to help increase range of motion, which is what we're looking for. So she would do that next, okay? third and we're going to use this bar to kind of show this but we've talked about eccentric split squats for quad flexibility eccentric chin up lowers for lat flexibility eccentric calf lowers are probably the best thing to do for you know calf and ankle stiffness so she pushes up with her hands and then she slowly lowers with bent knees down for five seconds and then she holds for five seconds, okay? Remember, this is not for somebody who's in acute heel pain. This is not somebody who has severs or has an injury. This is someone who has stiffness from an old injury and is maybe trying to work on getting that resolved. So five reps of five seconds lowering. Again, good support in the research for that. So she would do that after the circuit. And then lastly, we wanna work on maybe the shin muscles. We wanna get the shins a little bit stronger so that they can pull her toes up. So she just does a little bit of duck walks. So toes are gonna be up and she just walks about 20 steps down back and forth. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's really simple, right? The research is clear though. Consistency is more important than intensity. It's better to do three or four things that know are helpful every single day than it is to really go crazy on stretching your calves one day and then ignore it for the rest of the week. So if you're someone who's trying to help an athlete with this or you have this issue yourself, 10 minutes per day is better than one epic half hour stretching session.